What's going on everyone? My name is Talon Sai, and you are watching Sunday Gun Day. I hope you're all having a great Sunday so far. We are back on the range today to test out a new offering in one of my favorite categories, pistol caliber carbines. Now the competition is pretty stiff when it comes to this market because there are so many different styles to choose from. You have varying form factors, different operation types, all sorts of bells and whistles, and this one caught my eye because it keeps things pretty simple. An AR style, 9mm direct blowback pistol with what seems to be some very high quality parts. We're going to be taking a look at the Xyphos from Battle Arms Development. The Battle Arms Xyphos series of firearms are designed from the ground up and purpose built for almost anything that you have to throw at them. At the heart of this pistol you will find a 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum receiver set with a free float M-Lock compatible handguard to match. This version is equipped with an 8 inch chrome molly steel barrel and a black nitride blowback bolt which will hopefully ensure reliability and ease of cleaning. Each Xyphos is also built with Battle Arms 9mm buffer system that reduces weight, felt recoil, and wear. For the controls you'll find things like their rack ambidextrous charging handle and enhanced everything including the mag catch, bolt catch, single sided safety, and even the takedown pins. The Xyphos pistol also comes standard with an SBA3 brace, an adjustable three position pistol grip, and a smooth nickel Teflon trigger. All right, it's time to see what this thing is all about. I pulled this Nikon PTAC spur from another similar platform that shot nine millimeter. Not sure if it's gonna be zeroed, but we're gonna find out. We got about 30 rounds to test that with. Let's see where we're at. A little bit of adjustment there. Oh yeah, we're good now. Oh man. No lock back and that is by design. All right guys, back for a first mag impression with the Xyphos. I may seem a little bit biased here, but like I mentioned, I love shooting pistol caliber carbines. The form factor of something like this is perfect. It might be a little bit crunched up for a few different people, but because of some of the features on here, it makes it super easy to operate. I love shooting nine millimeter. They are just insanely fun. Now, as you see this thing folded up, it is a pretty damn small package. One thing that you obviously have to keep in mind is your hand placement on here. I probably should have put a hand stop on there, but I'm always mindful of where my hand is in relation to the muzzle. On the end of the eight inch barrel, you'll find an A2 bird cage, which is plenty sufficient for nine millimeter round like this. The handguard is pretty damn good looking in my opinion. I believe there were definitely some aesthetic choices when designing this firearm, but judging by the overall build quality of just feeling this thing, I don't think that aesthetics were put first. Functionality definitely seems like it was put in the equation well before that. I'm trying to feel if there's any play at all between the upper and lower here, and it is just insanely tight. The machining lines over this entire gun are spotless. I really don't notice any type of flaw or imperfection on here, and this thing just screams high quality right from the start. Now for the ergonomics, like I mentioned, when you're shooting a small package like this, some people might feel a little bunched up, especially if you're shooting with the SBA3 brace all the way in. <laughs> That's obviously very tight. But if you extend this thing out, you do have a little bit longer of a pull. One thing that's actually pretty cool about this setup is the adjustable pistol grip on here. For the most part on pistols and basically all my ARs for that matter, I'm running something like a Magpul K2 grip. The reason I do that is because it has a more relaxed grip angle and when you're shooting something that's really small, that's pretty important. Instead of having your wrist sort of angled forward like this, the pistol grip on here is actually adjustable, so if you loosen the screw on the inside, you can move this forward or backward depending on how you like your gun set up. For the rest of the controls, everything on here is enhanced, like I mentioned. The trigger guard is skeletonized and is all one piece. You have the enlarged bolt catch on here, so reloads should be pretty damn easy. Super easy to find with your thumb when you slam that mag in. The safety is a little bit oversized and it feels really smooth right from the get-go. However, 
It's not ambidextrous. That's something that I would prefer, and obviously that's something I can swap out in the future. And then you have the oversized mag release button, which is a very nice touch. This is a 30 round Glock mag, and they tend to fall right out of there. This gun actually shipped with a mag from KCI, so I will load that one up in a little bit here, and we will test that one out. Then of course you have their rack charging handle. It is ambidextrous and it feels pretty good. I have no issue at all getting my fingers on there. The one thing that you probably notice is that there is no last round bolt hold open system with this gun. That's something that is kind of a bummer. I would like to see that in a platform like this. However, you can't win them all. So far the shootability feels great. This thing is just thumping away. The accuracy department, pretty good after getting that thing zeroed and I'm excited to shoot this thing some more. So with all that being said, let's load this thing up and head back out there. All right, let's see what this thing can do. I'm running the KCI mag now that this thing came with. Feels pretty close to a Glock mag. It already seems like this thing is very accurate, so I'm curious to see what it will do at a distance. KCI mag, pretty much the exact same as a Glock. But now let's try something that I haven't had the best luck with. ETS mags. run just fine. Now let's burn this thing down a little bit. Another KCI mag, 50 round drum this time. Actually locked open. Wonder if that was because of the follow or what? These mags can be kind of goofy sometimes. All right, time for the real accuracy test. We're gonna work the tree a little bit from about 20 yards. Easy. Now back here from 50, I'm gonna be shooting at the two thirds ADAP target, which is the smaller TA targets. If you guys wanna check those out, there's a link in the description. Let's see what we can do. I wonder if I could hit the hostage swinger, which is about this size. saved him. Now back from about 75 yards, if I had to guess, I would say that this dot will take up that entire two thirds. Might have to move up to the full size. Nope. Seems to be just fine. How about the hostage swinger at 75 yards? First try. All right, back from the 100 yard rock. Let's see if I can still hit that two thirds. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> now, if I hit this hostage swinger from 100 yards on the first try, I'm gonna be very impressed. bit tougher.
last one goes out to everyone who supports the channel over on Patreon. I would not be making these videos without you guys, so thanks a lot. Not even warm. All right guys, back for some of my final thoughts on the Battle Arms development, Xiphos. I mean, what can I really say about this thing that I haven't already? If you couldn't tell, I really enjoyed shooting this thing and like I keep saying, I really love platforms like this. If you're bringing them out for recreation, the ammo is pretty inexpensive to shoot, just a regular nine millimeter, but also if you wanna put this into a more practical application, something like this has a very nice form factor it functioned flawlessly throughout today's testing, and that was probably the fastest I ever put 350 rounds through a gun when I brought it out here for testing. Before we go too far, I do wanna talk about this trigger too. It feels pretty much like a mil-spec trigger. However, it does have some fancy coating on here, and it actually feels pretty damn nice. I would say this is about a, eh, maybe a six pound pull. It's pretty heavy. But for a gun like this, it really doesn't need to be all that light. Reset is pretty typical for an AR. There's a little bit of creep and pretty nice break. I mentioned in the beginning that this thing caught my eye because it is simple and it very much is. Direct blowback, the nitride bolt in there seems to be functioning pretty reliably. It honestly doesn't even really look that dirty yet and I'm not shooting any type of crazy top notch ammo. I could definitely see someone putting this into a home defense style role, maybe a truck gun because it is small and compact. And they even offer these in a few different variations like a 16 and a half inch rifle version. So when you go with something like that, you could run it in like a three gun competition or any other application really. I've been pretty impressed with this thing so far today and I'm glad because these things aren't cheap. Now if you compare this thing to an evenly matched platform, something like an AR9 that is direct blowback, has the same form factor, there really isn't a whole lot out on the market that I've seen that matches the build quality of something like this from Battle Arms. There are quite a few more budget style options in the five to $800 range and I'm not knocking those platforms at all. As you guys know, I tend to gravitate towards the higher end market when it comes to different platforms. And this one right now is coming in at around the $2,000 mark. Now, if I'm comparing this to other nine millimeter platforms with a similar form factor, but a different gas system, I would put this right up against the CMMG Banshee. The Banshee is coming in a little bit cheaper. It has the radial delay blowback system and it does have last round bolt hold open, which in my initial testing, I did run into some hiccups. It's not always the easiest thing to get a platform like this to lock back reliably. However, I sent that thing back to them. They worked out the issues and that thing is running pretty damn good now. That would probably be the closest competition to this, but then when you're talking about small guns like this, even the Vector and the Scorpion and things like that come to mind. There are so many awesome options out there on the market today, and I think this one kind of falls into its own place. I'm now picturing this thing as sort of a no frills, do it all AR9. It takes Glock mags, it seems to be ultra reliable. And the only thing that I really wish it had was a last round bolt hold open feature. So maybe Battle Arms will develop something like that in the future, no pun intended. So if you guys have any questions on this Xiphos, let me know in the comments down below. I'm thinking in the future there might have to be some sort of pistol caliber carbine video. It would be like an hour long comparing all of the different options out there. But again, it really comes down to your personal tastes and preferences, what you like in a gun. Do you like something a little more aggressive and raw like this, or do you want something a little more tame with some newer technology like a Banshee. The more I think about this now, the more I realize that that video should probably happen sooner than later. If you guys wanna see something like that, slap a like on this video, and if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. It's gonna be all for today, so as always, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.